Hey everybody, it's Dr. Ann. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be tapping on the people that I can't help. So let's just jump right in. I refer to my earlier videos if you need an introduction. Uh, otherwise, a reminder to change the words so that they're more fitting for, for how you're feeling. Okay, so let's start by finding the sore spots underneath our collarbones, taking a nice deep breath. <sighs> and I'm going to start by thinking about some of my patients that I feel like I'm totally unable to help them that yeah that their needs are just too great and I'm not even sure what I have to offer them deep breath tapping the circle in our chest I acknowledge that it's been really challenging For me to have these patients that I have nothing to offer. Ugh. This is where the eyebrows start. <sighs> these people, these people that come to me for help, and I feel like I have nothing to offer. Try to breathe. <sighs> Even though it's hard for me to admit. Part of me shuts down because it's so hard to see someone in front of me who is desperate and hurting and suffering and there's really nothing I can do to help them. Deep breath. Just move to under the eye. This helpless feeling. I acknowledge how hard it is to look at someone who's come to me for help and feel helpless under the nose. They're feeling helpless. And I look at them and I feel helpless. I'm not even sure what to do. Not sure what to offer. <sighs> Chest. I acknowledge how difficult it is to not have a solution. Deep breath. And I invite you to tune into your body. I'm doing that right now and I'm feeling some contraction and constriction in my abdomen. This feeling, this feeling of helplessness makes me feel weak, makes me feel sad. So let's go to where the ribs jut out. This sad feeling, it's so hard for me. Side of the body. Part of me wants so much to help. And sometimes there's just nothing or very little that I can do. And I'm allowing myself to acknowledge how difficult that is. Let's go to the inside of the wrist. What am I supposed to do? This person's probably going to die. And I have to have that conversation with them. I have to tell them, I'm so sorry. I wish that there was something else that I could do. I wish there was something I could offer you. But I just don't have anything. Ugh, it's so painful to have that conversation side of the thumb and I acknowledge that part of me becomes numb sometimes 
because it's so intense. I don't want to be the person who tells someone that there's nothing I can do. Side of the pointer finger. So many patients believe that doctors and just the medical profession has more information, has all the information, and if we have nothing to offer them, if I have nothing to offer them, then they believe that there is nothing that can be done. And I admit that in many situations, I feel the same way. Deep breath. Middle finger. Uh, it's so hard to be with patients who have a terminal diagnosis, especially when they are young, especially when they have children that depend on them. Yeah, it's so hard. Side of the ring finger. I acknowledge how hard this is. And I'm allowing myself to recognize that this is often so intense that part of me shuts down. Part of me doesn't even feel the intensity. Part of me is not always able to, yeah, to be fully present with them because it's so painful. Because part of me wants so deeply to be able to help them to be able to give them hope. And I also want to be honest. Side of the pinky. So I acknowledge the part of me that wants to be honest, that wants to give the most current data and the most current knowledge of of how Western medicine deals with certain terminal diagnoses. Deep breath. And even if, and even when that message is, I'm so sorry that this is a terminal diagnosis in our perspective and our experience, and I just don't have anything to offer you right now, Except for hospice. Oh, that's so hard. And part of me feels like I'm just giving up, that I'm blowing them off, but I'm not. I just, I don't know what else to do. Side of the hand. I acknowledge how hard it is to be in this situation. To be the one who is supposed to have the answers, and I don't. Top of the head. And I acknowledge that just being honest with them is something. The willingness to have those really difficult conversations and the willingness to to really open and facilitate the dialogue about, okay, this is what medicine says in, in your situation, and how do you feel about that? How, what are your fears and what are the challenges here? What are your priorities? What are your fears? And what can I do and what can I help facilitate? so that you feel as supported as possible. Deep breath. So even though sometimes the only thing I have to offer is supportive services like hospice or home health or dietary suggestions or having 
a really, really frank conversation, I'm open to the possibility that all of those things are and have the potential to be incredibly valuable. So I acknowledge that even when I feel like I don't have anything to offer, when I don't have the answers, when I don't have the solution, maybe that's okay. Maybe I can continue to be honest and have the courage to be as present as possible with that person and really take the extra time to talk to them about coming up with a strategy to make this process as relatively easy as possible. Deep breath. And even if this isn't an easy scenario, I'm willing to offer what I have and I'm willing to more deeply value and appreciate what I do have to offer. Even if it's a referral to hospice. <sighs> Under the ribs. And I also choose to acknowledge that medicine, Western medicine, doesn't always have the answers. That sometimes people do have unexpected remissions and they do get better despite what the statistics tell us, despite what, what we expect. Side of the wrist. And even if that is statistically less likely, I'm choosing to remember that it's still a possibility. And it's not my job to dissuade someone from, from having hope. So I'm choosing to continue communicating and providing knowledge and advice while still respecting each individual's journey. And I'm choosing to trust that people may have the ability and the potential and actually even an unexpected positive healing outcome that might be outside of my prediction, that might be outside of medicine's prediction. And for those that don't, for those who, who do end up dying, maybe that's okay too. And I'm open to the possibility that having that frank conversation and having the courage to really go through their fears and try to make that as comfortable a process as possible is a great service. So I'm choosing to continue showing up for my patients no matter what they're facing, no matter what I feel like I have to offer, whether it feels like something huge or it feels like nothing. It's not up to me to decide what the impact is. So I'm choosing to trust and I'm inviting myself to release this feeling of weakness. I'm inviting my body to release my feelings of sadness about my patient's fate. And instead I'm choosing to honor their path, to honor their journey, which includes their journey back to healing or to death, however that may look for them. Just choosing to show up the best way I can, the most supportive way I can in every moment.
just going to tap over my body. Thank myself. Great. Thank you.